Hi, I'm trying to find my author pose. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I've written a book. Sometimes I do this. That's it. Just a little one. It's done. It's there. It's already it's business. Yeah. <laughs> How did you first get into performing? Because it was something that you were interested in from a really young age. Yeah. I mean, we were not athletic, the girls and myself, my sisters and I were like not into sports. And I don't know if that comes from like a traditionalist upbringing or what. I think my mom wasn't interested. You know, my mom would say, why would I run unless someone's chasing me? And I still don't know why one would run. <laughs> and we don't care where the ball goes. It's not my business. I would never throw myself in front of a ball or be like, oh, I don't understand the millions of pounds behind that industry. Equally, enjoy your football. But I loved um, music and dance and well, I didn't love piano, but my mother said that it would make me more mathematically inclined if I studied piano. She was wrong. It's the self-help kind of meets memoir kind of. It's the book no one together. wanted. It's the book no one wanted. I was, I was trying to write a memoir and I just found it a bit like, I get this whenever I read a, a, an autobiography like, oh, this guy talks about himself a lot. Even people I love, I sort of get 200 pages in and go, Really? More about you? Ah, oh, you've done so many great things. Well done. Right that your part-time job as a stripper yeah, was the best, best part-time job that you had of all the <laughs> other things that you tried. Yeah. What was it about being a stripper that, that suited you? It was a good job uh, in the sense that there was a lot of weird women working there, so I felt like I fitted in with them. Uh, the, the, there was low lighting and uh, I hate the fluorescent lighting that you get in office jobs and supermarkets. Uh, the uniform was pretty comfortable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, it was, it was um, the hours were flexible. It was almost impossible to get sacked. You basically have to be absolutely insane to get fired from a strip club. Even then, like... <laughs> There, there actually was so much mad stuff I couldn't put in about strip clubs because I would run out of room. When you sit down to read your to read an audio book, whether it's mine or anyone else, you should like, oh, I've just got to sit here and read for an hour. That's, just, I'm sorry, that's quite boring, and it really, just sitting out and reading for an hour, it just puts you back at school. You're like, oh, I just couldn't be fucked. I'm, that's, I'm, that, that is the god's honest opinion. I sat down, I could not be asked to read out. I, I don't actually know how long it is, eight or nine hours. I just, it's so daunting. Yeah, my grand. Um, which, the way that you write about her is, is so wonderful and your conversations about, um, I think there's a moment where she maybe thinks that orgasm was a myth, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so female for, fe for females. For females. For people with, with vulvas. Yeah, so we talked loads. I really miss her for that reason. And that was the thing that I was, most worried about in the book but just because she died about a year ago but before she died we've been talking about it and I've written stuff about her before and our conversations about sex and just her general knowledge about a lot of her friends at the time and her life at the time and this just rubbish sex education like if I thought mine was rubbish it's like oof <laughs> yours was really really bad um and I said to her do you mind if I say a gig about this idea of orgasms because we were talking once and I said oh they're really good though they're really good and I sort of mentioned that she had a good power shower in her, <laughs> in a house that you could take off the wall and we sort of had this ridiculously awkward but funny conversation about that. You're right you're not averse to mooning though either. No but and again I would say that the moon the the shape of the buttock and the cleft it's not a threat. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a sort of invitation for a, you know, for a, for a tune. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, you know, it's okay. I don't want to do anything that's threatening. Mm -hmm. And what, what has the been the, the, the most strong reaction you've had to either a moon or a, a boob flash? The only reaction <laughs> I've ever had is not, as I would have perhaps hoped, a little bit admiration or the, the kindling of an erotic impulse, oh no, just shrieks of laughter. <laughs> That's all I get. I got drunk and then got on Twitter and was tweeting along with my programs thinking I'm being really funny. And then the next morning, Nancy, my wife, was like, what, you know, what the hell were you doing last night? The stuff you were tweeting was insane. And I looked at it and I something had gone wrong and I'd just been, I'd begun dictating tweets 
on my phone because I thought it'd be faster. And I was like, well, I'm not getting many likes on these. And um, it turned out half of them were gibberish, which is such a, such a 21st century kind of thing, you know, where no, at no other period in time could you actually sort of have too many drinks and then more or less broadcast your um, drunken ramblings mm. to literally millions of phones around the world. So where have you... I took that bit out though. I can't remember why. I think I just, there was too many drunken scenes and I took that one out. And where did you come to in the do I or did I drink too much question? Well, I definitely drank too much and I probably still drink too much, but I think it's defined, you know, they say 15 units a week or something, which seems um, very restrictive. As a teenager, we were obsessed with Ouija boards. We'd seen the film The Cult. Uh, the Cult? No, we've seen the film The Craft. The most incredible film for like... And it, I guess it does put me at a very specific age, but I feel like any particularly woman between about 39 and 45 is going to be like this film. This is the most incredible film. Because it was about like teenage girls who were very powerful, who did cool shit, and then it had the Smiths on it, so it was like... And we were obsessed with it. And what we used to do is we used to... Um, buy this thing called Old Moore's Almanac, which like, I don't even know what it was, but you could buy it from the news agent. And at the back had loads of like PO boxes for places you could write off to. Um, and they would send you like pamphlets that were like, how to make anyone fall in love with you telepathically, <laughs> how to exercise mind control on anyone on earth. And like, I guess they must have been for 13 year olds. Cause like, I don't feel like as an adult, I would fall for that. <laughs> but like us, you'd have to send a check in the post for 99 pence to this place and then wait for weeks. And then it would arrive and one of you would be like, oh, we've got it, we've got the ability to control anyone's minds. And then you'd have to like do these spells. We used to do loads of spells and a lot of Lots of it was just like, uh, like absolute nonsense that one of us had made up. Yeah, it's weird that you were, like we were so into that phase and then we were just out of it. <laughs> but let's say that we let's say we're good listeners as well. Oh, well, we are good listeners. <laughs> and it's funny, I, I met a neighbour on the tube coming over this morning, and and she you said, get a word "No, she, I, I don't, I don't know what she's up to." But so it was nice to see her. <laughs> I think I'm sure she enjoyed talking to me. Talking to me, um, <laughs> no, but I think I might have used the expression that I'm a good listener to her, which is terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am not a bad listener. I just rather do the talking. Shh. Okay, <laughs> a lot of people bought the book, which I didn't expect. I really, genuinely didn't, and so I, I think I'm better known mm. now, and um, I find that you know it feeds my ego. And of course, I'm I'm much richer because I made a lot of money out of the book, which is why I wrote it. And is that why you wrote the second one as well? Of course, it is. <laughs> and I've also written it for my for my son because um, I'm I'm a daddy now. So I uh, I have like uh, that makes it sound like porn. Anyway, <laughs> I, but it's it's that thing where you go. I think Papa's maybe a better term because I've never seen a film where someone's referred to him as Papa. Um, yeah, better Papa. Uh, so I, I wanted to write something for him so that when I'm, you know, old and grey, I won't be grey. This is all this is all fake anyway. Um, but there'll be something for him that'll be like not just dick jokes. <laughs>